What's up, traveler? Just like everyone else, I've been waiting for Zenless Zone Zero for a while now. The first time I saw it, it captivated me instantly. Like this? This is right up my freaking alley. With their really cool character designs and the modern urban aesthetic they're going for, this is easily my favorite aesthetic in media in general. This game looks like a freaking vibe and I could not wait to play it. However, while I was very excited to play the game, I was also a bit worried. I was worried that this game wouldn't be able to deliver on something that's very important and crucial to me. I was worried that this game would repeat an issue that I had with another game that unfortunately made me not want to play it anymore. So when I finally got my hands on the game and played Zenless Zone Zero, I was so relieved and blown away. This game surpassed my expectations. Zenless basically gave me everything I wanted. For you to understand how this game delivered on exactly what I wanted and surpassed my expectations, I need you to understand my perspective going into this game. RPGs are my favorite genre in gaming. I love them because I get to immerse myself in this brand new world and interact with it. I get to learn about the story of the world, learn about the characters, and have fun while doing it. Games like Persona and Fire Emblem. Those two are my favorite game series of all time. And sooner or later, I want to get into Dragon Quest. So this is exactly what I wanted for Zenless. To be able to give me the ability to learn about the story, the world, and these characters. So now you're probably thinking, well, yeah, that's exactly what the game does. So what's the issue? And you're exactly right. This game does deliver on that. But the reason why I was so damn worried about this game not being able to fully deliver on that is because of my previous experience with Genshin Impact. Now, I love Genshin. I really do. I love the story, the lore, the characters. First time I played that game, it was so freaking amazing and gave me feelings of magic and whimsy while I was playing it. And my favorite part of Genshin was learning about the story, these characters, and the world. And for a long while, it was able to deliver on that until, at least in my experience, it wasn't able to anymore. Now, if the two issues I'm about to mention have been addressed and are now better, please let me know because I will be more than happy for what I'm about to say to age badly. In fact, I want what I'm about to say to age badly because I want to play Genshin again one day. My main two issues with Genshin were the fact that you couldn't replay any of the main story or any of the character stories and the progression system. Now, the first issue I've come to terms with, because in a way, it makes sense. Genshin is in the style of Breath of the Wild, this huge ever expanding world that you can explore. And I bet that it would be extremely hard to be able to make a mechanic that you can replay stories. I don't know, I'm not a game designer, so I really don't know how hard that would be to implement. And in Breath of the Wild, you can't replay story missions. But you could also argue that you don't need to bother replaying story missions in Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, because once you beat the game, you can just replay the game. The same goes for a lot of other RPGs, including Persona and Fire Emblem. You can't replay missions in a lot of RPGs, and that makes sense. The issue is this. Genshin is an ever-expanding story that we probably won't see the end of for a very long time. And for the people that play the game a lot, they probably have the story fresh in their heads a lot of the time. But for those who haven't played the story, or for those who do play the game, and want a refresher on the entire story, they have to go and look at archives on YouTube. They have to go look at retrospective videos and or walkthroughs of the game from years ago in order to relearn the story in detail. And again, I've come to terms with this. I love Genshin a lot, and I want to learn about the story and the characters because that's the entire reason why I even decided to play the game. But the second issue, which I hope isn't an issue no more, but if it is, this one I can't come to terms with. And it's the reason I stopped playing. This issue really just hurt my freaking feelings. Genshin's progression system felt nearly impossible. To progress in the story, you have to level up. You do this by completing different missions, dailies, and other tasks. 
and for a while this worked for me. Till it didn't. The last character story I remember doing was the one with Ayaka. I had so much fun learning about her character and getting re-immersed in the game. But after that, I couldn't keep going because the game wouldn't let me. It became incredibly difficult to progress and level up. Some of the missions simply weren't giving me enough experience points. Worst of all, the enemies kept getting harder and harder to beat. It was as if a massive wall had appeared that I couldn't get past. And behind it was the reason why I was playing the fucking game. And that just hurt my feelings. Really badly. Genuinely. I was so conflicted because I wanted to keep playing. I wanted to keep learning about the story, the lore, and the characters through the game kinesthetically. Then eventually, I just gave up and decided to just experience the story visually, like an anime. And again, I'm okay with that. I can only pray that this issue has been fixed in Genshin so I can one day play it again. But this is why I was so terrified that Zenless Zone Zero was going to do the exact same thing and hurt my feelings all over again. But thank God, thank freaking God, they did not do that. This game basically gave me everything I wanted. A game with a really interesting and immersive world, story, and characters. A game where it's actually pretty damn easy to progress and I can replay the main story and the character stories whenever the fuck I want. I had worries and the game addressed them. The progression system in Gen Genshin, wow. The progression system in Zenless Zone Zero is such a breath of fresh air. This game gives you a ton of ways to level up. Whether it be the main story, character stories, a boatload of side quests, spamming the VR chamber, and more. Leveling up in this game is genuinely fun as hell. Plus, even before you reach the point to get to the next chapter, they still give you extra story. Like, it's so freaking great, bro. It doesn't feel stressful to level up. It's the opposite. Leveling up is fun and it's a vibe. Now, could progressing in the game get more difficult later on? Yeah, of course. But even if it does get a bit harder to level up, as long as it doesn't go into literally impossible territory, I'm good. I don't care. Because the second it goes into impossible territory, I'm getting off the game. I don't, I don't fucking care. I'm not going to that shit again. Now the other one. <laughs> you can replay the story whenever the fuck you want. Now, I know it doesn't sound like a big deal that you can do that, but again, because of my experience with Genshin, this is a huge deal. Because the main, because the main reason why I play this game is to experience the story, learn about the lore of the world, and build a bond with the characters. The fact that I can re-experience that whenever I please is a huge W. It makes me so happy, you don't even know, dude. I can assume this was much easier to implement because the game is a semi-open world instead of a huge open world. I don't know if Honkai does the same thing, and if it does, let me know. People were already gonna archive this game on the internet, but now the game has done it for us. Just like Persona. Fire Emblem and many others, for as long as this game is available, this is a game and a story I can always come back to. Clap that up, bro. Clap, clap that up, bro. Clap that up. I also want to mention that um, when it comes to pulling characters in this game, for me, it never feels like a necessity, but instead a bonus. What I mean is this, if you want to learn crucial stuff about characters in this game, you don't need to pull them. You can learn about them through the main story or their character stories. Now of course there are trust events where you actually need to have the character in order to do them, but they don't actually give you crucial and imperative information about the character. So you're not locked out of anything super important by not having the character. Like I said before, it's a bonus. You pulling the character and being able to level them up is a bonus. You doing the trust events, if you get the character, that's a bonus. 
and you unlocking different combo routes by obtaining a new character, that's a bonus. And if you really want to see the trust events for a character and you don't have them, you're probably just gonna have to look it up. But that really isn't a big deal to me because you already have to look stuff up. Like for example, the character teasers, the character demos, they're fucking EPs. And of course there's the wiki. And of course, you don't really need to pull a character in order to progress. The game is already fun as hell, so pulling a character is legit just you enhancing the gameplay. Speaking of which... Bro, tell me why this is not a fighting game, but at times it feels like a fucking fighting game. Go figure that the developers of Zenless also had a discussion with the developers of Street Fighter VI. Damn, I hit my clock. So, I've been playing this game for a while, and what I've learned is that, um, you cannot button mash. If you try to just button mash, you are going to get your shit kicked in. This game literally has the finesse of a fighting game, where if you really try, you can do some sick ass combos. Again, with the characters that you already have off rip. I let you just learn some combos with Ambi and Nicole. And they're making the gameplay even better with coming updates. There's a parry mechanic where if you switch out at just the right time, some characters can parry the enemy and then counterattack. The game is so freaking fun, fluid, and free. And that's one of the main reasons why I would even want to pull a character. To unlock more combo routes and to mix match characters to do even more cool ass shit. And doing really cool combos and seeing really cool stuff is the same reason why you play fighting games, right? I get the same feeling playing Zenless Zone Zero. The characters are always my favorite part in any story I consume, and this is definitely no different when it comes to Zenless Zone Zero. First off, the character designs are absolutely amazing. Literally, as I was playing the game, the entire time I was just like, everyone in this game has drip. And of course, it goes without saying, the characters in this game are hot as hell. There's different factions in this game. My favorite faction so far being the Cunning Hairs. Maybe because they remind me so much of the Odd Jobs group from Gintama. I wouldn't be surprised if that's where they got the inspiration. And my favorite character in the Cunning Hairs is Nekomata. This is my goat right here. From her finding a place to belong to her then losing that family, to her once again finding a new family and a new place to belong. A family that will really have her back. And for who my favorite character is right now, it's a tie between her and Koleda. I think that Koleda is definitely one of the best written characters in this story so far. Her dealing with the trauma of her past and wanting to just leave it behind and move forward in life. For it to then now come back to haunt her, and now in order for her to continue moving forward and living life with her new friends and family, she now has to look back and face her past. Similar to what Edward and Alphonse had to do in Fullmetal Alchemist. I don't want to go too in-depth into the story in this video because, yeah, I'm definitely making more videos on this game. Mainly focusing on the story, the characters, and whatnot because that's my shit. Overall, this is an amazing game and it's even freaking better than I expected. I'm really enjoying the story so far and I'm absolutely loving the characters. Learning more about the lore of this world bit by bit is so engaging and exactly what I was looking for. Mihoyo expelled all of my worries. So now all that's left to say is thank you. Traveler, we've got ourselves a sick ass game to play. I want to thank you for stopping by and hope you enjoyed your time here at this checkpoint. If you would like to support my passion and make this checkpoint your second home, you could do so by joining my Patreon for as little as $2. You get videos like this much earlier than they appear on YouTube and you have your name at the end of every future video. With other tiers and even better perks such as exclusive videos only seen on Patreon. The power to vote for future videos and sneak peeks of upcoming projects. You can also become a channel member for $1 where you also have your name at the end of every future video and gain access to my exclusive emojis. I pour a lot of time and effort into these videos and if you want to see them more often then this would definitely help. But of course, just you stopping by and spending time with us is always a blessing. So. Thank you. Also, comment below who your favorite character in Zenless is so far. But with all that being said, have yourself a damn good one and safe travels.